Hervé Cohen is an award-winning documentary filmmaker focused on capturing the essence of the human experience. Born in Paris, France, Hervé studied law for five years before he decided to make the jump into film. While he never practiced law, he credits his studies for training him to defend his ideas and for making him a better writer. Before he begins any project, Hervé uses his writing process to uncover his point of view. Knowing why he wants to make a film and what he wants to express helps him to create a more compelling, focused project. And that clarity also increases the likelihood of getting his project funded in the first place. To learn more about today's guest, his life's work, and why collaboration matters so much to him, be sure to listen to today's episode of the Fearless Storyteller podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Fearless Storyteller podcast. I'm your host, Ethan Freckleton. Have you ever noticed how fear stops us from creating and sharing our best work? Join the Fearless Storyteller as we explore the heart and soul of writing stories, songs, and scripts that sell with the people who write them. Each guest has their own unique hero's journey and insights into the intersections between limiting beliefs and success. In exchange for your support on Patreon, you'll receive monthly one-on-one -on -one sessions with yours truly. I'm a certified master life coach, and I've worked with best-selling authors, award-winning filmmakers, and everything in between. Help fund the show today and get the support you need to take the next step forward on your own unique journey as a storyteller. Again, visit patreon.com forward slash Ethan Frackleton. All right. Enough with that. On to today's show. Hervé Cohen, welcome to the Fearless Storyteller podcast. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, happy to have you as well. Our meeting was somewhat uh, serendipitous before connecting, but for for people um, for people who may not know who you are, what would you like to share about yourself? Um. So I'm a French filmmaker. So I was born in Paris mm. and grew up in Paris and I studied law. Mm. Uh, although I was really passionate uh, by photography from my teenage years. Um, and also growing up as a teenager, I was also f obsessed with travel and uh, I wanted to discover the world and mm. um, I was interested in languages and cultures and, um, and, but, you know, and, and then in, at, in high school, like the last two years of high school, I, I, I had a really wonderful professor, uh, one of a kind who made me discover, uh, sociology and anthropology as a subjects and, uh, you know, um, a way to discover humanity. And I was really intrigued and passionate about, about the, these subjects. And mm. I didn't put two and two together, like my passion for images and photography and also uh, my desire to travel and my interest in anthropology, sociology and uh, human behavior. But so mm. I was so young, like, you know, and when I was, I was, I had to decide what, what to do. And I, uh, you know, my parents, my friends, everybody like pushing me into like doing something secure, like, okay, law. <laughs> mm. I was also interested in human rights and, you know, and, and being an advocate for, you know, uh, the voiceless. And, but so it, it was aligned somehow to who I was, but, uh, after my law studies, I, you know, I, I decided that I had urges to, to tell stories and uh that's when after my five years of stu law studies i embarked to a journey of being a filmmaker <laughs> documentary <laughs> filmmaker but uh for me it was not difficult because it's i had i don't know i had luck uh i met people who trusted me and were interested in my ideas and um and there you know i i just i made my first film with a crew and with not no 
just the budget that the production company assigned to us. And mm-hmm. then we had our, you know, at the time, uh, cultural television channel, Arte uh, was interested in, in the subject, bought it. And then that's how, you know, just, you know, lucky strikes after lucky strikes, I was able to um, make my ways into uh, being a filmmaker. And mm. uh, then I learned camera work and editing along the way and uh, my trajectory. And, um, and then I continued. So, I, yeah. you know, that's, that's, and then, you know, I found really, happiness in in filming people and traveling around the world and telling stories Mm. (laughs) that's great (laughs) did you ever for even a moment like practice law or intern or or do a job after you studied no (laughs) no not at (laughs) all how far into that process of study did you realize you didn't want to do that so after four years i had my master's degree and then the fifth year was a parallel study between like studying to become a lawyer an attorney and also applying for uh uh, a specialized studies in media cinema law production law Mm -hmm. and i was like "Mm, i think i'm going to do the you know this path i'm just gonna go there and just get closer to communications and um but in like still in the law studies law field but and that's you know that's when i really discovered that the creative field was something that i was attracted to and Mm. that was my calling like i was i had much more of the creative mind than, you know, maybe the rigorous uh, lawyer, you know, mindset. But although, you know, I mean, being stud- being a law student, student for me was, was a, a good, a good asset for, for writing, for defending my ideas and for, you know, putting on mm. papers what I had in mind. And that was actually a good training for me to, uh, to, mm. to, uh, to be, to be like a documentary filmmaker and a writer, because I have to write and, uh, my projects and my ideas. So uh, I was not a very good writer before my law studies. And then I became, you know, a better one after my law studies. So I, 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 I can say that that actually made, made sense. Well, tell me about the, how this writing works you mentioned you had to do i mean you know it's a visual medium obviously and so you kind of settled into documentary film so how does writing play into that what role does that play Mm. that's a very good question because we we would tend to think that uh, filmmakers write scripts, write scripts. When mm-hmm. they write, they write scripts like fiction. Yeah. But um, for documentaries, I think the writing is, is an essential part. Um, because I think it's, you'd rather have in mind what you want to, to achieve, even if documentary is made out of, you know, uh, random encounters or, you know, uh, serendipity or, uh, you know, facts that you don't control, the reality yeah. actually that you can't control. So you can't write in in advance. Yeah. But the process of writing is really a good way for you to sit down and think about what you want to tell, what story you want to tell, what point of view you want to uh, express. Mm-hmm. And this is, I think, a key part of, of documentary. This is really like sitting down and and on a blank page of paper, writing your ideas, um, even imagining sequences, imagining how the, the film will evolve, what would be the end uh, and the, or the outcome. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, then with that, even if, you, if the film doesn't follow these lines, it's a, it's a good, you know, it's a good guideline, guideline that uh, for you to have in mind your objectives um, it's all about, you know, what are you dreaming of? You know, what do you want to achieve? Um, mm. and, and just imagining, for example, the opening sequence. Um, mm. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's a good way to, to dream about your film. And, uh, uh, and, and it gives you also prompts, you know, to make scenes, you know, also because documentaries is fiction, I can say, in, in some way, you know, because 
of course, there is the reality. You have you don't have actors, but you have real people. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you you uh, in order to to go to a certain direction or to express something or to demonstrate something or your point of view, you sometimes want to create sequences or that's you know that that, that where the the border between fiction and documentary is very thin actually it's very mm. fluid and um and i can imagine you know many times where i had to for example to suggest something to to my protagonist mm. uh, what mm-hmm. how about we do this you know how do you feel about doing this and what if you know you uh why don't you talk to, you know, your, your mother about, you know, about this topic, you know, what, how do you feel about that? Sometimes you have to prompt things and, yeah. and if you write them in advance, if you have them in mind in advance, it helps you tell the story, I think. Yeah. Um, so tell me more about point of view. Like, mm. so obviously that that's an important outcome of your writing process. Yes. Um, is deciding or figuring out your point of view so you know stepping back and talking to me who's never done a created a documentary film Mm -hmm. what is point of view um i think point of view is everything and it's um it starts from the question like why do you want to do this film you know why do you want to address this topic and uh where do you want to go with this um and you have to you have to assess where you are and what you want to express because it's not just it it makes the difference between reporting like as a news reporter mm-hmm. and and a filmmaker uh, and i think a documentary filmmaker is a filmmaker he he or she is not um just reporting the facts you know it's really telling a story with a point of view with a an outlook on the world uh mm-hmm. an outlook on a situation or um, uh, um a gaze on what you what you what you um on your world on your surroundings mm-hmm. on the topics that you want to to express um so i think that yeah the point of view is is the starting point uh, and it's a good way also to push you to um, to make a difference. You know, your film is even if you address the same top same topic, mm. it's not going to be the same film because you are going to express your point of view and you're going to film it the way you uh, you feel it and you uh, whichever way you want to express your point of view and and your gaze on the topic your yeah. outlook yeah. so yeah so i think it's it's something you have to define also and and think about mm. hey you're not doing this film just just for for any reason you have a reason you have something uh, on your mind that you want to tell yeah. so at what point were you comfortable expressing or exposing your point of view because obviously you would have to do that mm. can you say that again so to to create this point of view and and make that part of your your film your product your writing mm-hmm. means being vulnerable enough to express and reveal your point of view to some degree right oh yes of course you um i mean, I mean express- was that was that ever like something you thought about uh, you know or were vul- conscious about conscious about the your you're talking about your uh the filmmaker's vulnerability yeah at your own in your in your journey yes of course um i mean if you want to i mean it's all about being genuine being honest and um open to your feelings too and of mm-hmm. course when you go this route you are vulnerable because you expose yourself Mm. And and that triggers, of course, um, you know, exposing yourself, and it's probably you put yourself in, you know, in the light, and um, and that could expose some uh, vulnerabilities. I mean, if you want to talk about 
uh, family issues or, um, you know, your relationship. Person. I mean, I the film that I make is are about other people or, you know, about mm -hmm. discovering other people, but they are also about discovering myself and about, um, uh, you know, digging, digging deeper. And, and also it's the, I have also made films about my personal family, you know, a family journey, uh, mm. uh, and history. So that's also the same, I mean, I don't make any difference between digging in about digging through my family roots or history and uh, finding out about other people's history because I think it's everything is universal. And mm. uh, I had made a film about uh, my um, about the country where my family is from. It's Algeria. Mm. And this country I've never been. I was born in France. My family uh, are Jews from Algeria and they had to, because they were considered French, even though they had lived in that country for thousands of years, mm. uh, they had to leave Algeria to go to France when Algeria became independent. Mm. And I made a film about my grandmother who actually, when she came to France, she didn't fit. She she couldn't, you know, she she was lamenting all the time to us, her grandchildren, about the loss of her country. Mm. And um and there was there was so I wanted to tell the story. I, I wanted to to reminisce uh, about the figure of this grandmother and uh, from interviews and connections with my family and to tell the story of Algeria. Mm. And it was really the first time that really happened. And thanks to, you know, cinema, uh, I was able to tell that story. Mm. And, and for me, it was very personal. You know, no one, I mean, no one knows that there are, especially in the United States, that there, are, there has been a lot of, like the Jewish community was really, really important in North Africa. Yeah. Um, and, and some uh, I was. I have a friend who works as a teach, a film, a cinema teacher at CCA, and she asked me if I could, if I had a film that I wanted to share. Mm. Uh, and I, I, I picked this one. I was like, let's see, <laughs> and and I was so surprised that actually this film was received like in a, such an emotional level and. And people felt really like engaged and, and uh, about the story. I was like, well, but you know, how come you're like interested? And, and people were like, this is universal. And your personal point of view and story about your family like touched us uh, because we also are related to some family history from a place that we have never seen. And mm. so, yeah, I just wanted to make a point about the fact that actually sometimes the very personal the matters are very universal and can, can touch beyond your circle. And, um, and uh, the point is also like a personal point of view can go far also about, you know, reaching out and, and moving other people because they're so personal and, and people can be engaged more, I think. Yeah. What was that film called? In French, Une Autre Vie, Another Life. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because my, my grandmother would always, you know, tell the story about Algeria and ask children, well, like, we already felt, we felt the nostalgia, even though we did never lived there. <laughs> but she would end her um, stories by, it was another life. Mm. And so we had the deep feeling that we, um, we had missed out on something, you know? Yeah. 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 And how is, so you, you know, I, I write stories and, you know, point of view comes up but but in your case you always have your point of view but you talk about the protagonist in, yeah. a, in a film so what's the separation between your point of view and the protagonist i don't think there's a separation um because um the point of view the story and the protagonist they all come together to tell the same story i think 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and the protagonists are the vehicle for to convey this point of view. Um, and um, and without them, they there would no there would be no film <laughs> and no point of view. So um, that's the beauty of documentary, I think. Well, how do you? Well, one, I imagine then you you must learn a, a, a tremendous amount just in the process of creating a documentary because they're external to you and they have their own experiences and history and absolutely yeah yeah. that's that's also another i mean i i'm all about you know learning and be humbling be humbled by by other stories and lives and you know listening to people and and learning from them this is really what i enjoy the most in filmmaking it's really that you know like learning from others and from their experience um yeah so it's definitely the what attracts me the most you know learning from other people yeah yeah so how what's your process then i imagine it's different project to project but how do you choose your subject then or your Mm. protagonist I mean, I I don't make a lot of films because um, it's hard for me to be if 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 my ideas don't come from something really deep, from a, even a fantasy, a, a something that I really dream of, mm. then it's I have a hard time <laughs> sustaining you know the work. And yeah. if I don't find the passion, yeah. it, it's it's not easy, you know. Um, uh, I. And it all comes out from from this place of fantasizing about an idea on, on, a, on a project. Hmm. That, uh, one of the films that I made was um, I don't know I had I had I had this fantasy about projectionist like in rural areas that would uh, have people from you know remote places discover cinema and discover stories and films Mm. and i mean it came out of from it it came from from just this idea like uh, as a fantasy i i would see images of these people going from village to village and i don't know where that came from but um then you know i then i i researched and and i dis- discovered that it was a very common practice in china at the time mm. and uh with my brother who is uh who studied chinese and speaks chinese and he's also a filmmaker we researched together and uh we actually found out about these projectionist teams in in the rural china so many like and and uh, it was amazing because, you know, from, from that dream of telling a story of people sharing their passion for cinema or with, with, with just rural, in rural areas with, with peasants or with people who don't have access to, to culture or to mm. movies, uh, then we, we actually uh, came to realized that these stories existed in in places like china also i know that it exists in india in in different in in portugal too we also afterwards made a film in portugal on the same topic um (laughs) and uh and so yeah so that's that's an example of something that had dreamt before and uh came to life um and this this film we made it in 16 millimeters it was uh 35 minute film for French television. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was absolutely fabulous too. Yeah. Uh, the it must, images, have, been, must yeah. have been really exciting to make that discovery. That, oh wow, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it was beyond our imagination really, like in terms yeah. of landscape and, uh, you know, for us, it was a way to discover places that we would never have been to, mm-hmm. you know, like, rural china like people who had never seen a westerner you know and uh uh, just the the scouting trip before you know making a choice of where we would go was 
was absolutely like unforgettable like to, mm. to go to these places and and follow these teams and they were like carrying their projectors and reels like uh by hand you know and uh, crossing rice fields and uh and then you know just you know putting these screens on a field and having all these kids kids running around and being mm -hmm. excited and it was such a wonderful experience <laughs> <laughs> what a trip and yeah so, so detouring a little i mean just maybe taking that as an example mm -hmm. um you know obviously it takes money to do a scouting track trip it takes mm -hmm. money to make a film that's that's gonna work and so like how, how does that work from the point of view having an idea and making mm. this discovery at what point do you involve others or or make a proposal or seek mm. funding for that how does that work so for this for this film uh so i i made most of my films in france mm -hmm. where as you probably know uh public support for filmmakers is strong mm -hmm. so there is a me mechanism uh, within the Ministry of Culture mm -hmm. uh, in the Center for Cinema where uh, it's called uh, uh, Aide à l'écriture, like uh, writing um, grants. It's a writing grant. So it, mm -hmm. it gives you the money to research, to do trips if you need to, uh, and help you write the project. Mm -hmm. And so when my brother and I, we had this, uh, we wrote that idea of, you know, filming, traveling film projectionist um, in China. And so uh, we had to write a proposal and then we got the grant from the CNC, Center for Cinema, mm -hmm. allowing, us, allowing us to to travel there and to research. Yeah. Then afterwards, when we had... Uh, done that um we we were in a good position to to write a stronger proposal for for television and uh, we in france we you know we are always helped uh by production companies that you know who actually know where to go have connections with uh, commissioning editors and stuff like that mm. so we uh we approached a production company with that idea, having done the uh, scouting trip and written a proposal, a stronger one. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for, from that point, we got Canal Plus, which is a important um, television network in France. Mm -hmm. And so we got the funding for the, for the film eventually. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you mentioned like the production companies and that and, yeah, uh, it sounds you know, using words like that like it's almost a you know a very business like, not personal experience. But I'm imagining maybe is different. Um, it's different. Yeah, I don't like. What's your level of personal connection when you're getting help from somebody like in a per, in the production company? Like, oh, you have to be like, especially. In, I mean, in this field. Hmm. And I would say, especially in France, where people are very suspicious or, you know, they're not, uh, they're not going to, it's not, yeah, there's two mindset, like in France and in the U.S., it's kind of a different mindset. Mm -hmm. I, I, have, I believe in France, like, it's important to get introduced and um, to have connections with people to, you know, would allow, yeah, would open doors. Mm-hmm. I feel in the U.S. is more about the idea, like, oh, that, that could work. You know, this idea is amazing. And, of course, you need connections, too. But, um, uh, but in France, def definitely uh, everything works with uh, people that you know or people who referred you to other people. Yeah. Uh, that works better like that, for sure. Yeah. And, yeah, it was a part I skipped over, but... I was aware of it. So you, you, when you were able to do your very first production, right, while you were, you were wrapping up school or you just finished school mm -hmm. and you were lucky. So what were you doing to get into position 
to be able to to make films at that point okay so i i'm gonna share an experience my first experience was actually a very bad one <laughs> good good because yeah, I... we're, we're this is real talk right yeah, yeah. yeah. so so same thing i had i had this idea uh again a, a fantasy because it was um i knew be, in the alps a little community a little village uh in the uh, southern alps um and I, I had been there many times in vacation so i knew i knew the place and the the legend mm -hmm. around this place at one point in history in the 19th century um the the men of the village migrated to mexico to seek fortune and mm -hmm. because there was nothing in their valley um it was hard times and they had heard about the new world and they just picked up and left and they actually their story was amazing because they actually made fortune they succeeded they uh they uh created businesses that were like uh amazingly successful uh um the equivalent of maces in mexico was built by one of this uh uh guys from this uh french valley mm. um and it was all about you know dreaming of a place and you know taking a chance and discover the new world i mean for me that resonated a lot with my young you know uh, mm -hmm. self mm -hmm. and but of course i had never made films and uh so i asked a friend I mean, it was it was he was not like uh, a long time friend or good friend. He was some someone I knew, yeah, who had experience in film. And I told him about that story, and I said, you know, um, how about we make that film together because you have connections and you have made film before, and I have not made films before, so we could be co-directors. And he said, oh, that's a great idea, blah, blah, blah. With his connections, he connected with uh, a, net, a French, uh, the public network, one of the French television networks. Mm. And they were interested. But he, behind my back, signed with them without my name. Mm. So he, he said, oh, by the way, you know, we can't be co-directors uh, because, uh, you know, you're not experienced and, you know, the TV uh, is, would be more reassured if there are only be my name. Mm. So that was a big, like, mm -hmm. shock for me. I was, I was being, I, I felt um, uh betrayed <laughs> i was yeah. looking for the name and for the word and so it was a big drama but he told me you know if you want to be part of the shoot you know i, I of course i i welcome you on the shoot you can uh help conduct the interviews and i i, I speak spanish so for them that mm. was a good thing and mm -hmm. uh but you know i'm the director yeah and I, I was in front of a choice, you know, yeah. like, what should I do? Should I, should I tell him that he just go F himself and uh, I'm going to sue him? Mm -hmm. Or should I, should I seize that opportunity for me to have a first experience yeah. in film and also discover Latin America, this continent that I had fantasized about for my own whole teenage years i told you I, I i had fantasies about traveling and and latin america was was the part one part of the world that i really really wanted to discover yeah so i said okay yeah all right i'm i'm in <laughs> i put my ego aside yeah which is something i do all the time i mean i i don't you know i don't work with that so and it it's helpful so <laughs> it's helpful to set it aside <laughs> oh yeah yeah. So, um, so I, I went and I went to Mexico. I, I did my part and I also observed a lot. I learned so much on mm. that shoot. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, I had my name on the credit and the front credit, like, uh, as the wage, of course it should have, it should have, but, um, and that was my first experience actually, mm. which was not hundred percent successful as I imagined, but yeah. I mean, maybe that it was the best way for this film to exist. And, um, and I, um, I, you know, I took from it what I had to and I learned from it. And then with that, I, I was stronger to actually defend my f- real first film hmm. uh, because I had that experience before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I could have seen like, I, I've certainly heard enough stories from people where something like that would have been enough to de- derail them and they would have walked away and just said, I gave film a try. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess that requires some long-term thinking <laughs> <laughs> to be able to set aside the ego, to have some idea that there will be more for me after. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, but it didn't go without any like pain and drama, even physical yeah. pain. I remember the the day before uh, traveling, I had like a, um, kidney stone crisis, like, you know, like Mm. contractions. Mm -hmm. It was so painful, so horrible. Mm. And because I was so like tense and, you know, upset also, you know, what happened, but I, you know, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) I do. Very upsetting. Yes. It was really upsetting, but you had in some sense, some constraints placed upon your role which I imagine will allow you to not over-function during the, the shoot as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So fast forward, you've, you've done a lot of work. Um, like, how do you approach collaboration and building a team, you know, mm. in a way that serves you and serves the project? Yeah, well... Uh... Uh, how can I say that? I think I cannot, I cannot work alone. I'm not good alone. I need, I need collaborators and that's the beauty of film. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can't, you cannot make a film alone. Mm -hmm. And, and I really feed off of, uh, other people's, uh, Mm -hmm. advice, reaction, point of views, um, and that comes from that the starting point is the collaboration with the producer, um, and sometimes you know, of course, you, there's some some sometimes there are some conflicts, and you have to. That's an opportunity to also assert and affirm your point of view and what you want to do, what you don't want to do, and that happened many times where I had to stand firm mm. on my beliefs and not you know give in. Mm. Um, but at the same time, it's really good because that you need to be confronted to other people to also make sure your ideas are valid. Mm. And, and if they are, if you f- firmly believe that they are, then you, you continue. But sometimes it also pushes you to you know, ta- challenge your ideas and, and maybe change your axle and, uh, yeah. and also take other advice. And that starts with the producer, but also that continues with other collaborators, whether it be uh, the director of photography or mm-hmm. the, the editor. And the editor is probably the, the figure in when you make a documentary, which is really central, really mm-hmm. central. The mm-hmm. editor makes the film with you. It's a real collaboration. Um, because it's documentary and, uh, and sometimes, you know, when you bring the footage at the editing table, you, you're not sure <laughs> what's going to happen, even yeah. though, even though, you know, the film is there and, uh, you're, you're done with the shoot, but then it's, it's, it's about building the story and that, and that goes without saying that the editor is a key part of it. And, yeah. um, and you need to be in tune with the editor and to um, allow for the editor to ex- also express their choices and their voices. And, um, and it's, of course, you, you need to listen. Uh, 
Yeah. And uh, and it's a collaborating process. And I really strive <laughs> with collaboration. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not as good alone as I am when I am with a team. Yeah. Even, you know, just to say, what do you think about that? You know, and just expressing ideas, bouncing off ideas off to uh, someone I work with is just, for me, it's already a, a good step, you know. Yeah. Well, and I can see clearly how being clear up front with your writing process and, you know, surfacing what your point of view is and staying on top of that would only make it easier than to communicate with and agree on a vision with say the director of photography, like what shots are you even going to get? Right. And I imagine you don't have a unlimited budget to just (laughs) <laughs> yeah right do things like, over and over <laughs> yeah yeah like I, and how do you even decide so like you know a little bit of the process how do you decide what you're going to shoot mm. because that's a constraint for sure what we're going to shoot or yeah, what, what or when or yeah how what or when approach that those limitations mm-hmm. yeah well, each case is very different, of course. Um, some films are more predictable. So you have, you know, some some films are, you know, you know the sequences in advance, mm-hmm. you know what you're going to do and what you're seeking. Um, and, um, and then you can prepare everything. And, uh, but some others is more, you know, is, uh, some other films... Um, you're going to find out, you know, when you, when you do it. <laughs> and so you need to be ready for uh, the unexpected. Mm. Uh, and, and the, the, uh, and the relationship with the, with the director of photography, but many times I am the director of photography, mm-hmm. um, uh, depending on, you know, the film, um, uh, and the budget, but, but, um, but yeah, for sure, the dialogue, the dialogue before is important. And then when you are in the action, in the process, then it's, mm-hmm. it's a question of synergy of, you know, uh, uh, the way you communicate quickly uh, with the other. And yeah, sometimes you talk and sometimes you don't, you know, and yeah. it's just, you know, it, it happens organically. Yeah. Have you ever, was there ever a point where you thought about like, Quitting or taking a pause? Uh, quitting my job? <laughs> yeah. Like, yes, many yeah. times, many times. And I have a friend who also makes fun of me because I used to say, okay, I think I'm going to stop everything and open a bar. <laughs> and, you know, and so, and, you know, many years later, I'm still, you know, trying to make films. <laughs> And everyone, every now and then this friend tells me, so how about the bar? You know, what's the, mm-hmm. what's up with your bar project? So, and That's that funny. was, That's yeah. funny. I was just talking to somebody a couple of days ago for the show and their version of that was the tea shop. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah that's a good that's a good idea too <laughs> so yeah no definitely i i've because of course you know over the course of the these my my years of, of working it's it, it's never been a straight line you know it's always ups and downs and uh, uh you have to believe in yourself and your ideas and sometimes you you know it's you have moments where you don't you know Mm. And, uh, and you're like, okay, so maybe I should do something else. (laughs) Is that, is that what, what, what comes up for you in those moments where you've thought about giving up? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, also, you know, by coming in the U S also allowed me to diversify my skills too. You know, I'm like, Mm. maybe I should also do something else, which means, I can also edit and also shoot, mm. which are still, you know, in the same industry. But for me, they saved my life many times. Like, yeah. uh, not, you know, process, the process of making films is really uh, tedious and long ones. And, uh, uh, and it's good to have other skills. Yeah. So I, I have developed these other skills, especially when I arrived in the U.S. Mm. 10, 10 or 12 years ago. Yeah. And 
you know, I, a, a lot of us have that need to keep growing or feeling that sense of growth and trajectory. Absolutely. That's my case. You know, I, 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 uh, whatever the age I, I, I am or the state of my, um, uh, skills or, you know, uh, where I am in my professional life, mm -hmm. I always want to learn something new. And, uh, I, you know, I don't want to feel like, oh, I've done this, done, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've seen that. And mm -hmm. I don't want to be blase about things. I, I, I want everything to be a new experience, mm -hmm. a new learning experience. That's really what I, life is all about for me. Mm -hmm. Is that success then being able to do that, to have new learning experiences? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 I see that as a success. Yeah. What else do you see as, what else are your criteria for success then in, in what you do? Wow. Um, just, you know, being proud about what I do and what I have achieved, uh, moving people with, my work, um, mm. yeah, uh, trying to reach out to other people and see that, you know, they respond. Yeah. They're moved. Yeah. They, they understand my point. That's, yeah. Is that a connection thing, an impact Absolutely. Thing? Yeah. Yeah. Connection, impact. Yeah. That's the measure of success for me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how much do you need beyond putting a roof over your head then? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> enough to open a bar. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Over the years I've, I've had some lots of, you know, uh, issues about, um, how to navigate financial difficulties as a filmmaker, you know, it's really feast and famine. And, yeah. um, and so you have to be, uh, cool with that <laughs> like yeah. okay you know that you have chosen you not you know you could have you could have remained in the legal trajectory and you would have been a lawyer and you would you would have been you would have been okay uh yeah. and uh, probably you would have had a nice lexus or uh whatever car luxury car and and a nice house but i have a bike <laughs> yeah, i bet it's a nice bike though so. yeah <laughs> Have a nice bikes, bike. Not, not bikes aren't a, bikes aren't cheap these days. Come yeah, on. it's not even an electric bike. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got lots of hills. Uh, I mean, yes, yes, and so it, it's it actually the bike brings me the the, the like the the, the nice uh, workout that I, mm. I I pride myself to do like every day and uh, being healthy and in good shape. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, no, for, for sure. I know that I, I didn't find the easiest way. Mm -hmm. I didn't choose the easiest, easiest way, uh, in terms of, you know, financial security, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's a trade-off. Yeah. Has your reason for doing what you do shifted or changed over the year? The reason? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, it's mm -hmm. the same reason. Yeah, so you were pretty clear. I imagine in those times of famine, though, right, mm. know, that you need ways to remind yourself or reconnect with. Oh yeah, yeah. To my to my initial goals, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I something. I think that's something people overlook sometimes. You know, get overwhelmed and start thinking, looking externally for what are the things I should be doing. Mm -hmm. right? What am I missing? Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you need to have this like. To, to to remember you know what why you're doing this and yeah. you know, what's the satisfaction you get out of it yeah. uh, and it's definitely something I felt with life underground and uh, yeah. um, and this this film like this project totally um, encapsulates everything that I was looking for in the beginning uh, yeah. when I wanted to make films. Yeah. Well, tell me, tell me more about that. So I, you and I have talked about it a little bit off, off the record, but mm -hmm. yeah, tell me about this. So life underground is, is, is a one of, of the big fantasy of mine that I had. Yeah. Uh, and again, I had dreamt of that, of making a film uh, about, actually, let me backtrack. Um, 
I'm from Paris and I've always taken the subways mm. all my life. And, um, and wherever I go, when I travel, I take subways because I, I, I can, I'm, I'm a subway person because I, I take public transportation, in big cities, the way I've done all my life in Paris and as a way to, to take the pulse of a city and to look at people, to, to, to feel the mood of a place. Mm-hmm. Um, and also uh, sometimes and many times I look at someone in particular and I'm intrigued, I'm curious. Uh, I want to, probably I would want to talk to that person. Mm-hmm. Hello, uh, uh, who are you? <laughs> Where are you coming from? Where are you going to? Yeah. Um, and sometimes little things can intrigue me and can trigger my curiosity. It could be just being attracted by the person or yeah. uh, asking questions about, oh, you know, why does this person, what is this person going to do with this bouquet of flower? Who is this for? Um, what's the story behind, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's great, you know, to be able to look around and, and be inspired by people and, um, uh, so that's at one point I was like, how about making a film about that? You know, like approaching people, finding out about their lives and who they have, what they have on their mind. Um, um, and that would be the best way, you know, with a camera to actually go beyond my fantasy and actually connecting with these people <laughs> and mm. ta- engaging with them because I oh, it's because I have a film to make, you know, <laughs> I'm not just out of the blue talking to you. Yeah. You probably stand out a little bit if you <laughs> gear to, <laughs> to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for many years I had this idea in mind. I had written like a very heartfelt script you know mm. inventing stories of random encounters in subways and so just going back to your first question about you know with the writing mm-hmm. uh how does this come into play when you make a film i i've never been so inspired by writing a film project uh uh as by writing a, about life underground you know, when, mm. what i was dreaming about it inspired me so much and um, in the beginning, I had in mind to write about, uh, to write a document, like a straight up documentary, mm-hmm. a long format where stories would intertwine. Uh, you would, you know, the idea would be to connect passengers in subways from different places in the world yeah. and, and have their story resonate mm. one, one, one another. Uh, a love story could begin in Santiago and and develop in Berlin and and in Tokyo, you know, with three different protagonists yeah. um, because of the resonance and because you know we all have you all have things to share that are you know kind of similar um, in their way. Mm. But I I tried very hard to find funding for this project and. It was difficult because, of course, there is no story before that we know of. Until you until you surface it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. what's the story? What is it about? You know, uh, who are the characters? You know, I could not answer that. So mm-hmm. it was all about random encounters in subways, and I was like, you know, you have to trust. You know, this is a good uh, good ideas and idea, and it was it would could develop into a very compelling film but no way to find funding in france for that so Hmm. you know i i kept you know i don't know how i did but you know i i kept very motivated about doing this project you know kept me really i i think filmmakers have to be a little stubborn and really to believe in their ideas to, you know, to, to keep going. And that's, I think that's, that's what I am. I'm a little yeah. stubborn also. Yeah. I don't let go easily. And because I, I don't know, this idea was a fantasy of mine and a, I was very passionate and mm. about it. And each time I would travel, I remember I was in Singapore I, I took lots of for the first time in Singapore because I was traveling to Indo- to Indonesia. So I had a stop in Singapore, mm. took the subway there, 
because it was a very, very long layover, took the subway to go to the city. And, and I took many pictures in the subway and I was fascinated and, and um, because I could feel something about the country, about the place, you know, I mm -hmm. could understand things. And so yeah. this idea didn't let me, you know, I, I didn't let this idea go. You know, I was like, I need to do this. And when I came to the U S I was fortunate to be, uh, included in this uh, residency program at SF Film. Hmm. At the time, it was called San Francisco Film Society. And now it's called SF Film. And this residency program was a, a, an incubator where, um, with other filmmakers, you know, you would sit in a place and write and think and also exchange, exchange with others. And I, I, remember, I remember I told you about the fact that I'm not as good myself as I am with when I exchange with other people. And yeah, that's actually what happened. You know, uh, we had regular, we so-called production meetings where we would exchange uh, the, where we were in uh, the process of um, our development. Mm -hmm. And so exchanging with other people, um, we, you know, we gave each other feedback and, you know, it was a good support system. Mm. And that kept me going for, for a while with this project that I, it still was, you know, in my mind, uh, and more than in my mind really was, I was trying hard to, to make that happen. And, and so at one point, someone, someone told me about the idea of making an, a web documentary as some, something on the web with interactivity where you mm -hmm. could, you know, click, uh, on a passenger's name and, uh, you would, uh, all of a sudden listen to their voice, you know, and, and they would tell the story of, uh, their own story with mm -hmm. their voice. Mm -hmm. Um, and this interactive interactivity idea was actually really on point because, uh, with the journey around subways, you would, you know, you would, you would find where to where you want to go you know where if you want to travel in this imaginary subway from montreal to stockholm and then taipei and tokyo and yeah. go back to madrid like and along the way you meet passengers and the same way you're in a subway and you look around and you're connect with someone and you're intrigued by someone and you want to find out about their story the same way you can look at someone and you click on their name yeah. and you find out and you continue the trajectory, the journey with that person and, and you, and you listen to their story. Yeah. Or, so you, the, can, or you can skip it. Oh, you can skip it if you don't want to. Yes, yeah. exactly. You can yeah. skip it. And then you find yourself, uh, in the next, uh, subway somewhere yeah. else in the world. So the idea of interactivity and making a, a non-linear film, um, uh, was actually for me was like unlocked so much energy and passion. It was mm -hmm. like, okay, I think that's a great idea. And at one point someone told me, but Hey, you know, you've been having this idea forever. Why don't you know how to film? Why don't you take your camera and just go, you know, you go and you try, you know, you just test your idea, yeah. just find someone to, you know, to take the sound with you and, just go and shoot yeah. and meet people. And I was yeah. like, okay, that's okay. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so at the time at, at SF film in that residency, we had some interns and I was with a, a Brazilian intern who helped me. Mm. Uh, and, and I was fortunate to have a gig in Brazil for something else, another shoot, I was like, okay, that is going to be my first test shoot. It's going to yeah. be in Brazil. So I went to Sao Paulo and to Rio, and that was my first test shoot. I, I found someone to help me um, to translate and to, you know, navigate the subway locally. Um, and then I did my first, and it was so like with Brazilians, it was so easy. It was a piece of cake because mm. people are not shy. They're, they open to talk about themselves a yes. lot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they're not camera shy. They're not like into themselves, like in some other places, mm. they're really, uh, 
it's all about you know talking and be open about talking about themselves and in honest ways mm -hmm. so it was so successful that you know i i was able i had so much footage and i edited my first stories in brazil mm -hmm. and that's where i you know everything was like for me it was a validation of this it was a proof of concept and um still from this uh sf film residency program a friend of mine filmmaker friend of mine um introduced me to someone who um who knew everything about subways and who knew public transportation in in the world and organization around public transportation and he told me you should go check out this organization they're based in brussels mm. and they're all about promoting public transportation mm. it's, it's an organization that uh, also gather members uh, uh public transportation agencies all over the world that might be a good fit mm -hmm. and i went back to france i talked to a producer uh who in was introduced by a friend of mine same thing you know introductions mm -hmm. and then luck luck i mean in this in this world in this field you have to be like i mean it's not ab all about talent or about how good you are it's mm -hmm. also about luck yeah and she, it turns out that she knew about this organization because she had a friend who had worked there Mm. just random really that is yeah very random and so we had an introduction at this union for international public transport that was the name of this organization based in brussels and we um told them producer told them okay actually we're going to be in brussels next week can we meet <laughs> so um which was actually a, a pretext to just push you know the door open Mm. we had this amazing uh, meeting with a general secretary secretary of this organization who fell in love with the project mm. project he said i want to help you i want to help you find money to fund it and uh for him it was a great way to promote public transportation by you know focusing on humanity on people um on people you know yeah. uh, and um everybody has a story you know look around you're surrounded by you know the world and uh by humans and you know i mean so this guy was was instrumental in this in the success of the project so from that point he helped us raise funds through their members uh the subways themselves and it just just you know a few months later we were shooting we started yeah. shooting yeah and then it, it's then we had our first you know um release was at south by southwest the festival in austin texas um we we it was like a year to not even two years later but we shot we started shooting in in june 2016 and in march 2018 uh less than two years it was already online and you know with all the work translated into 10 languages um hmm. 14 subways at the time or 13 or 14 subways at the time were uh there with three stories per per subway um three passenger stories and the coding the interactivity the test online everything was done like in in so in so quickly yeah so then we uh had also the opportunity to um to create an installation with it it was another fantasy of mine mm. to create to show it in a public space to show mm. life underground so uh, for the for the listeners life underground follows passengers on subways and we find out through their voice it's a voice recording mm. we find out about their lives you know whatever they want to tell us about who they are uh of course i have some questions initial questions where are you coming from where yeah. are you where are you going to which sometimes are they sound like fundamental questions about life you know where are you yeah. coming from where are you going to 
but in s- transportation it's very it's a basic question but sometimes yeah. it, they're open to something really big you yeah. know and i ask them about you know their dreams what what did you have a dream recently at night that you can remember that mm. you know stayed with you mm-hmm. this is also another way for them to to open up uh, to their you know inside thoughts mm. and mindset so so we travel the subways we look at a passenger we click on the name or not <laughs> but mm-hmm. if we do then we uh we listen to their voice it's yeah. only a voice over and their stories kind of like around three minutes and sometimes very moving sometimes very intense yeah. um it could be about so we also in in the web documentary in the platform we have organized the stories by themes just mm-hmm. in case if you want to choose a theme mm-hmm. you click on migration for example and and then play and then you travel the world the subways you meet people and their stories will be connected to a migration story yeah interesting yeah and so this is has been online since 2018 but it seems to be a format where you're able to keep adding to it yes exactly that's it's the the odd thing about that project is never finished (laughs) (laughs) yeah because you disclosed you're still you're still thinking about it you you want to yes yeah yes i I still want to i still want to travel and to add more stories and more cities so yeah so we opened in in march 2018 and then we continued add more cities and subways and passenger stories Mm. on the platform yeah yeah well so obviously travel and making films is important to you so yeah you know it's been a year since almost since Mm. that's been a lot more difficult how have you been adjusting and channeling your energy uh it's been hard uh it's been really difficult um i lost my dad uh in Mm. march uh Mm. uh so covid hit Mm-hmm. and uh so i spent three months in paris so mm-hmm. i put like really i was focusing on my family but i had also the idea of uh as as soon as the lockdown happened i was like it needs to this time is so like uh odd we need to document our collective mindset and not being able to shoot myself being taken by you know by my family and being in paris i was like maybe i should ask young filmmakers all around the world to document their lives and to to tell us about their stories their mindset their state of mind at the time of corona yeah and so because of all the connection that i had with life underground because i've always hire a lo- lo- a young local filmmaker or aspiring filmmaker or a film student to help me i had these connections so that was a good first you know base to reach mm-hmm. out to and um very quickly i had built this network of young filmmakers on all continents mm-hmm. and um and they actually delivered for them it was also also a good opportunity to do something and to release also some of their you know emotions and yeah. stories and then uh, a few months later we have a series of shorts <laughs> so um it was good to for me to do something else not you know not being stuck at home but uh Yes, I was stuck at home, <laughs> but uh-huh. I also I was able to be in touch with with the world, you know, with other people. And for me, it was very meaningful for me to mm. to also be engaged with these young filmmakers because I I think you know it's 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 great to be able also to give them voice to to tell their stories. And I know everybody knows that COVID has affected tremendously the youth uh all over the world and um and it was important for me to to know more about that and to be more in tune yeah. with them yeah with their stories so now we're looking for funding for post for post production for this series uh we are looking for a platform to show it you know we um so with that's that's what I'm I've been working on right now yeah 
Exciting. Yeah. Well, for people who want to know more about you, because we're out of time. I know. I get, this, I get the sense <laughs> we, could, we could talk a lot more. Oh, yeah. Make a, make a long form documentary about it. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but uh, for people who want to know more about you, how can they find you and find your work? So Life Underground can be, if, if you want to check out Life Underground, it's on the web, not from a phone, but from a computer because it's interactive. You can find it at life-underground.com. And that's how you can watch this documentary. It's mm -hmm. also become an installation for museum and public spaces. Those mm -hmm. this, the are the other fantasy that I, I was about to, to explain. Yeah. Um, so it's being shown. It has been shown in different places. And my goal is to find other places, museum, or other public spaces to show it. But yeah. for now, you can watch Life Underground online. It's being yeah. seen and watched all over the world, and it's it's the magic of the web. Yeah, and it looks and sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> it's got Thank you. Very, very immersive if you wear headphones or have good sound. Yeah, and the music is important. Actually, the music tracks are made out of uh, the raw sounds of subways that we have recorded along the way, and the musician has used these sounds to um, to make music mm -hmm. with no instruments, just. Mm -hmm. You know, just using these sounds, the rhythms, the melody that we can perceive and in subways and, and these musical tracks are, uh, I love them. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. And so life-underground.com and, mm -hmm. and then for you, you have a website as well. Yeah, it's my name, HerveCohen.com, mm H-E-R-V-E-C-O-H-E-N.com. -E -E That's my website. Great. Yeah. Well, Hervé, it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Same here, really. Thank you so much for your uh, great questions, meaningful questions. And, yeah. Um, it was great, and I didn't see the time by. <laughs> go, go a, by. It does <laughs> Sorry. go by. We're yeah. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of The Fearless Storyteller. As a reminder, any and all links can be found in the show notes. And if you're enjoying this podcast, will you please consider leaving a review? By doing so, you'll be helping new listeners discover the Fearless Storyteller podcast. <laughs>